Howdy Stanford, how are things going today? Uh, this week we are talking all things plotting tactics, which is one of my favorite things to discuss. I often feel that uh, plotting tactics get short shrifts when it comes to uh, classes about how to construct narrative, uh, mainly because we spend most of our time talking about uh, characterization and point of view, which are equally uh, important aspects uh, to the narrative engine. But if nothing's happening in these scenes, if there aren't kind of external action plot points propelling the narrative forward, uh, oftentimes that's when our books get stagnant. And when our books get stagnant, that's when readers find something else to do. Uh, so we're going to try to make sure that we're writing uh, plots that are both compelling emotionally, uh, but also conflicts and plots that will be kind of compelling literally. Uh, so for the document I put together this week on various plotting tactics, there's a couple things that I wanted to hit, and then I wanted to add one more thought uh, for us to be thinking about as we're writing not only the rest of this week, but the rest of the quarter and throughout the first draft of your book. First, uh, the idea of uh, character-driven plotting. You know, kind of starting from this week forward, one of the big emphases, emphases, let's go with emphases, uh, of the class will be kind of the, the way that we have to graft plot and characterization together moving forward. Every single plot point will be illuminating something about your character. And your particular character will make her own kind of idiosyncratic decision making with each new plot point. So the plot is influencing the character and the character is influencing the plot. And we really see kind of the symbiosis that has to exist between these two seemingly independent things in order for us to do our job right. And I, I like the word seemingly in that context, too, because maybe when we're first wrapping our heads around narrative structure, it's important for us to keep them separate, to say this would be an issue of characterization, this will be an issue of plotting. However, once we get deeper into the drafting process, we see that these two things have to be the same have to kind of transcend their individualness and become indistinguishable from one another. Uh, during week eight, I'll share kind of my theory on what I call characterization, where plot and character become twins, become the same. And, and that's when we start to really cook with gas. We're employing these active characterization tactics, meaning that we're just letting the reader observe the actions, the reactions, and the interactions of the various characters. And then the reader gets to kind of make her own determinations about these things. You know, Pat DeWitt and the Sisters Brothers is definitely employing lots of active characterization techniques, letting kind of us come to our own conclusions about the way Eli and Charlie's sisters are wired. Character-driven plotting will kind of fall, be kind of like a, a precursor of characterization. So we think about not only how we're going to kind of let our characters decide what's going to happen next, but also kind of up their role um, consciously, kind of from our authorial framework, meaning we know that plot is defined as a series of events, and that's a fine definition for you know a critic or a student. But as working authors ourselves, we can't be satisfied with that definition. We have to add a very important modifier, and that adjective is meaningful. Plot is a meaningful series of events. And the word meaningful is never going to be defined by us as the author, but it's going to be defined by our protagonists herself. Uh, one of you mentioned in the forums this week that, that almost seems like the tactic that an actor would have when, when he or she is preparing for a role. That, you know, as they're off the stage, you know, perhaps they're the, the actor's name, let's say Julianne Moore. Um, she's kind of standing off of the stage and you can say, oh, look, there's a Julianne Moore over there. But then once, you know, she enters the stage and the lights go on and there's an audience, suddenly she stops being Julianne Moore and she transitions into the role that she's playing um, in that particular production. And I think we have to kind of think about it in a very similar standpoint where we say, this is where I stop as the writer 
And this is where my protagonist picks up and he or she is going to dictate what's meaningful as we push deeper into the narrative. So is this a sleight of hand? Of course this is a sleight of hand. We've been talking about lots of tactics for us to give ourselves permission to empower our characters. You know, we're taught as good little citizens uh, not to make scenes, you know, don't, don't, don't be so loud, don't be so crass. And that does probably make good citizens, but I don't know that it also always makes good um, characters. I kind of jokingly said during last week's chat that when I go into a book, you know, I'm never auditioning babysitters. I wouldn't, you know, ask Eli or Charlie's sisters to, to watch uh, my kid. But I do like spending four or five hours in their world, kind of test driving their consciousness and see what it would have been like to be on the road with the infamous and bloodthirsty sisters brothers. So we're gonna be thinking about character driven plotting and making a meaningful series of events and the word meaningful is defined by the character. Uh, the new thing that I wanted to kind of lob at you with this video is this idea of kind of the equation of plot. And what I mean by that is um, what I think there are two kind of huge components that go into kind of the recipe of what makes a compelling plot. So I would say that it's going to be um, the contents of the plot and also the structure of the plot. And I actually think those things are completely evenly weighted. I don't know that I had really thought about that as I was putting my first couple books together, but I was putting my, my third book, Damascus, together, which is told from an omniscient third person point of view and has, you know, eight or nine main characters. I was started to become increasingly aware of order um, and how order is going to influence um, not just causality, but also reader interests. So I'm going to make the argument here that... Um, that plot is equal parts content and equal parts structure. 50% content, 50% structure. You could probably have the world's most compelling plot ever, but if you don't find the right order, the right sequence to render those varying plot points to the reader, your book is not going to work. Um, you know, a book like The Sisters Brothers is really kind of taking advantage of, of just causality. Typically, you know, chapter two is a, a kind of a direct byproduct of chapter one. Chapter three is a direct byproduct of chapter two. So we're getting to see how somebody strings across one kind of compelling present action. And that might be helpful to the style of book you're putting together, or perhaps you're going to be telling the kind of story that's going to need you and need the reader to hop in a time machine periodically and say, now we're going to travel to this memory in 1983. Now we need to travel to this other memory in 1991. Perhaps maybe we're even going to travel into the future in 2018 or 2024 to find out some of the, the legacies of the you know, present action that's happening in, in 2013. I can't say for sure yet what this kind of books that, that all of you are writing, but I just want you to, conscious, to be conscious of it this week, that plot isn't just going to be a series of meaningful events. That's going to be kind of our working definition because I want you to be thinking of plot and character and how interrelated these two things are, but also be starting to think about structure, how you're kind of dividing and telling and ordering these um, varying units for your reader. You know, I always think about the revision process as kind of like assembling a mosaic. You're gonna, in your rough draft, or maybe even draft two or three, you're gonna write chapter one, and chapter 17, and chapter 26, and chapter 39, so on and so forth. And it's fine to just have that, that exist and have that be in the order with which it dawned on you. But then in the revision process, you want to come back with a more fastidious mind and say to yourselves, OK, now I'm going to start organizing the pieces or the tiles for this mosaic. What I thought was chapter 11, well, maybe actually that would be a really, really compelling beginning. So I'm going to push that up and make that chapter one. 
well, if I do that, chapters one through six have been kind of rendered obsolete. So I'm going to scrap all that material and then push chapter seven up and that will be chapter two and you know, so on and so forth. I'm not saying this in a way that I don't want your head to explode, but I think it's important for us to think about plotting is going to be content and plotting is going to be structure, but we don't necessarily have to be doing those things at the same time. You know, right now, just be getting to know your character, um, putting them and or putting her in kind of different situations, different pressure points, reacting to different stimuli. Be learning about her, and then you can kind of come back later and think about how you want to kind of structure this mosaic, which tile would best be suited um, in which um, sequence. And Brady was talking a little bit about that this week, just in terms of chapter lengths. You know, it's not just going to be is chapter seven best uh, best in the narrative as as chapter one, but it's also going to be well, chapter seven is 25 pages long. Um, is that okay? Or for this particular story, should chapter seven have the same content but be whittled down to 10 pages? Or it's 25 pages right now, but I think I'm kind of missing a crucial uh, vignette. So I'm going to kind of add that, making chapter seven, you know, 40 pages. That will be okay depending on the kind of book you're writing. You know, again, this is the very exciting and the very frustrating thing about being an artist is there are never going to be any right answers to these questions. Chapter structures that work for me, you know, won't work for other members of our class. And to compound that, you know, I've found in my own work that chapter structures in, a, a, say, a previous project might not work in a uh, project that I'm working in right now. I mean, I, I think that is one of the fun parts about being an artist is that each new book that I'm putting together uh, is presenting its own nuanced source of problems. So I'm always having to stay sharp. I'm always kind of honing my eye as a storyteller. You know, I'm never trying to master um, telling a story or writing a novel. I want to remain an apprentice writer forever. I want to like keep voraciously learning and keep uh, challenging myself on a book by book basis to become the best novelist that I possibly can. Um, and hopefully they'll, they'll kind of speak to each other that like, I wasn't capable of writing Damascus first, I had to write the first two books and what I'm the book that I just have coming out in a couple of weeks fight song, I couldn't have written that before Damascus because Damascus taught me some things about plotting and character that I then directly used in fight song. And we see how kind of this is just a continuum that each project is speaking to the next and we're kind of building upon the different things that we've learned. So as you're scribbling ahead this week, uh, make sure that you're thinking about um, Character-driven plotting, uh, uh, making a meaningful series of events, and the word meaningful is defined by the protagonist. And then also be kicking around this uh, equation of plot, that plot is made up of equal parts, content, and structure. Um, you can have the best sequence of events in the world, but if you don't organize it the right way, it might fall flat on the page. Uh, so kick that around and feel free to post uh, responses, comments, and thoughts in this thread. Happy writing this week.